Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Thursday, December 26, 2019. As the markets get back to trading, of course, we're closed yesterday for the Christmas holiday and had an early uh, close on Tuesday, uh, Christmas Eve. So uh, as we get back to trading, what I wanted to do a video on today is an update on the gold, gold and silver and the precious metal mining stocks as well. Quite a few questions on those. Uh, we hit our our third and final target on the uh, SILJ, the Junior Miner Silver ETF trade yesterday, or no, a couple days ago, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, there's still movement in the sector, and I want to go over uh, some of the key levels to watch. We'll start out here with just the near-term uh, developments. Uh, so, you, you know, early on in this video, you may want to act on this. Uh, I put out a chart this morning, and the charts I'm watching, about 15 13, 15, 14 or so is minor resistance on uh, the gold futures. I'm going to point that out here uh, where I get those levels from. You can see a couple reactions back here, uh, reactions there. So again, it's it's what I would consider minor resistance. I just added it to the chart. Um, going back for the last few weeks, I was highlighting gold being in this trading range and also um, you know, uh, moving up this uptrend line here, uh, the lower uptrend line, and then we had this trend line here and uh, stated a breakout of 1488 would be uh, bullish. That would be a buy signal, which it was. So gold's moved up very impulsively since then, took out the trading range, and we're back into the previous trading range, which again runs from 1488 up to about 1529 or so. And as I, as I said this morning, in the charts I'm watching, I uh, still, you know, that's still my my target now that we've entered this zone. Uh, however, uh, we, there's a good chance we could pull back here, and uh, although the the bid and strong the bid has been very strong in gold, and it very very well may keep going because this breakout uh, also coincided with a breakout on the more significant daily chart. I'm going to get to the longer term charts here in just a second. Uh, I just want to say that we are, of course, over overbought right now. You can see the RSI up here, pretty, you know, at overbought levels. So just take a a line from where we're at. You can go back here and see that you know you're not putting the odds in your favor if you're chasing this rally here. You can just go above and see what happened to prices after we hit uh, previous readings there on the uh, RSI. It doesn't guarantee a correction, but uh, it certainly says, hey. You took the breakout, great, congratulations. However, if you all of a sudden now want to buy gold, if you were, you know, second guessing the breakout or, or the follow through, and um, and and you're seeing the gold stocks running, and you start to get other, you know, services. I'm sure talking about gold now, then I think it's a little too late. Uh, it certainly, again, could continue to rally, but I would wait for a pullback here if you missed the initial thrust, even if you're already in it and you're looking to add to positions, because uh, it's all about risk-reward. From here, the upside uh, to uh, that target, it's only about three-quarters of a percent, uh, about eight-tenths of a percent or so, a little less than one percent. And, uh, and the odds for a pullback of that magnitude or greater, I think, are pretty good, almost equal. And uh, let me put a support level here. I think that's where I had... Uh, you know, an objective level if we pull back there, right about 15.04 or so. You also, since this morning, I've added, as you can see here, a downtrend line as well. So earlier today, I highlighted that horizontal uh, price level I just showed you. And uh, there's a downtrend line there that comes into play. And if you're saying, well, we took that out, Randy, no. That, to me, this is what I refer to as a momentum-fueled overshoot. You have tremendous velocity or momentum heading into a resistance level. And it is actually to be expected. It's more than common uh, when you have a strong momentum heading into a support or resistance level that you will overshoot it briefly and then uh, settle back or have the reaction there. So there it is. Um, you know, if you're in gold, and, and it depends how you're trading, I talk about uh, swing trading, and I talk about t trend trading and investing. And uh, if you're in, in that, then, uh, the, you know, then I wouldn't be overly concerned with this. Nothing but bullish price action uh, since that breakout last week. Uh, was it last week or earlier this week? Uh, earlier this week. Holidays have me all, all kind of flipped upside down here, kind of. You know, I'm working. I'm in my desk, not taking a, a you know vacation this year where we leave town. Uh, usually we do that, but uh, this year I'm at my desk. But again, I you know I don't I don't very actively trade this week. It's not normally it's not very conducive to trading. But there it is, uh, the breakout. And let's let's look at a few other things here, uh, short term, and then we'll get to the longer term charts and we'll get to the miners. All right, silver. Uh, silver is obviously going to run with gold. Uh, I pointed out this downtrend line a while ago, forming this symmetrical triangle pattern here, 
or triangle pattern. It might not be perfectly symmetrical, but there it is. So that was taken out. Here's your uptrend line. And uh, I had a 18, 11, 15, uh, or 18,115 is uh, resistance, pretty good resistance. And you can see silver hit that to the button today, I mean, so far and pulled back. So again, same story, overbought. Uh, you can see what happened every other time we were overbought. Just follow the lines up when you hit that blue line and, and you decide if it's you know been advantageous to, to take new long positions. So uh, again, I'm looking for a minor pullback. Who knows how far it'll go, but I can tell you if it gets back here at about that 1761-ish level and or downtrend line, uh, that would most certainly be uh, an objective level to go long. Uh, you know, you can stop somewhat below. Uh, really, eh, it could come back here and back test. That was a pretty important level, 1736. I don't think it'll pull back that far. Uh, the, the price action this week has been pretty bullish, but uh, this would this would be an objective level somewhere around here, back test of that trend line, and that a little above that. I wouldn't wait for a move all the way back to 1761 or so, uh, scaling a little bit above it. And look, if we continue to break out, if we power through these. Uh, these overbought conditions, uh, there's still going to be a little resistance overhead, not too far right here at about 1833 on silver. Um, but overall, let's just now flip over to long-term charts and, and uh, I'll kind of uh, take a look at the bigger, more important long-term picture here. So for the last, uh, gosh, I don't know how many weeks or even months, I've highlighted probably the most important thing on GLD. Um, you know, I've continued to reiterate my outlook that has not changed for the last couple of years now. The gold's in a bull market, and and this is uh, this it was just a correction, like every other normal correction in the last bull market that we had. Just like this correction down here, nothing goes up forever. You have corrections, you have legs up, corrections, and then the next leg up. And again, this I'm viewing as a correction, but. Most importantly, we took out the the blue lines were the most salient levels here in the last few weeks, and uh, we took that out. So you had that blue downtrend line right here, and the blue uptrend line here, forming a symmetrical triangle pattern, which gold broke out. And it didn't just break out; it broke out impulsively. Big green candle the other day, follow through today. But look, same story on GLD. And again, this is the ETF. We were looking at futures a minute ago. We're coming up to that 142.85 target, and we still haven't taken out the previous highs, uh, like I said. So certainly bullish, but getting a little stretched here in the near term. And uh, again, I think the risk reward, I think a reaction off that level uh, on around there. And of course, that minor resistance that we're at as well on uh, uh, futures right now. And even if we take that minor resistance out on GC futures, like I said, we're talking less than one percent, and that's about probably what it is to to this uh, to that one eight one forty two eighty five level. I didn't even measure it before. Let's just do that. Take a measuring tool, move up there, and that's it. Yeah, it's showing me about point five five, and I didn't grab exactly where we are. So again, that's it. Minimal upside. Um, although I wouldn't, I don't care to short gold here. Uh, like I said, this just broke out. And uh, I'm doing this video more so depending on where you're at and, um, you know, again, whether you're a trend trader or a long term trader uh, or, you know, an active swing trader. All right. So let's we'll look at the miners now. And, and what I'm talking about when I use these different terms, swing trader, active swing trader, day trader, trend trader, you know, a trend, you're trying to capture the bulk of a, a primary trend. Like I said, gold, I believe, being in a bull market. Uh, and this this is just a post back on July 9th. And at the time in that post, um, I covered gold and GDX, and the mining stocks. But I, I, I went on to say that um, that I thought that uh, silver was poised to play a game of catch up, meaning outperform gold. And I listed some of my favorites here. And, and, and what I'm getting at is those were, as I said back then, trend trades. They looked poised for some very pro po um, profitable trend trades. And uh, especially when you see me posting weekly charts, I'll show you these charts here. Let's just look at these real quick. Uh, let me center these. This is FSM. Uh, let's get this here, make this chart a little bit bigger. Okay, so um, back then, again, July 9th, uh, FSM it was at 284, had it going up here to 411. Error breaks signif uh, you know, signify where a reaction is likely. 
Uh, so that means, you know, a consolidation and or a pullback off that level, followed by a thrust. Of course, the next break of that level being um, bullish, giving you the next buy signal, and then eventually taking up to 602. Uh, so that was then. Uh, this is now. We go to FSM Weekly. And uh, the point of this is these still look good. These are still trend trades. So we go back there. Remember, it was right here under this bullish falling wedge, uh, and it broke out shortly afterwards, maybe couple weeks afterwards can't remember exactly when but even then at the time silver was already poised and did most certainly play a game of catch-up the silver miners and the metal silver itself outperformed gold and the gold mining stocks uh, from that point this one rallied 62 percent and at the time and I did believe uh, I, I highlight update a lot of these and where is that one S uh, FSM there it is uh, nope that's not it there it is. Uh, at the time, I mentioned that the 411 target was hit with a brief momentum fueled overshoot. And, uh, uh, just like I talked about on gold a second ago, it's when you have a near vertical launch, like a rocket going up, you're going to blast by that. And so again, that was back on what was that, uh, August 12th, not too far afterwards. And uh, going back to where we're at now, so you can see that was the momentum field overshoot. We had a reaction. See that consolidated around that level. There's your pullback off there. Now we're right back and we hit it again today, almost to the button. Uh, let's see, the high 414 versus that resistance of 411. Now here's the thing. Number one, we've already hit that level once. And, and I often say the reason I list multiple price targets is that I, I say the initial tag of each level is likely to have a reaction. And therefore, after that, uh, you're most likely to break through it on the next run up. So we've already had the pullback that worked off the overbought conditions. See, we're overbought at the time and we're powering back up and uh, solid break above that level. Now we have a previous reaction high that'll still need to be taken out because we had that momentum fueled overshoot. But either way, I, I do think that the door is open now for move up to my next target at 602. So we already had a 62% gain on that first trade. And again, it's updated. There was an opportunity for more active traders to uh, book profits, uh, partial or full profits or raise your stops and uh or hold on and you're back you know you're still at about a i don't know whatever probably a 50 yeah about a 50 percent gain at this point now uh even if you held it on so again up to you if you believe that miners are in a bull market then you can ride out pullbacks or uh, you know, micromanage your trades. That's what I like to do. You know, take some off the table when a pullback's likely, uh, or raise stops to protect your profits, and then recycle back in on those pullbacks. That's what I call micromanaging for the next leg up. And then AG, I mentioned there. Let's pull that chart up for you. Uh, AG, we have it here. That was at 791 back then on July 9th and had it going up here to 829 and 1344 and then 24 as a longer term trend target. Uh, let's take a look at AG now, see where it, where it is and where it, what it's looking like. So there it is. It uh, was right about here. It had broke, it already broken out of this uh, downtrend line, this wedge pattern. Uh, and it, as of now, it's gained about 60%. So there it is. You can see we powered, we did have a reaction right below that uh, you can see zoom in right there you can see a reaction a little bit of a consolidation under that 829 target a little pullback then broke out above it and see that big green candle that tells you that was resistance and that was a breakout again of resisted the next resistance level because we didn't just limp through there boom big green candle through it ran right up to it within just a couple weeks about three weeks hit my 1093 target back then and look that's that's that you know textbook technical analysis kicking in for you there there's a reaction one two three four four consecutive weekly candles trying to get through there each and every one failing to close above 1093 there's your pullback ran at it again test 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 i mean i don't even want to count them there's so many there it's got to be a dozen candles finally boom a big green candle through there this week breakout and so that's what i talk about and that's why multiple targets are listed um those are your reaction points. And so this opens the door for a move up to my next target there at uh, 1344. Um, whether we pull back in the near term, which I think I just made a case is, is likely uh, or not. Uh, sometimes when these miners want to run or drop, they can really do so. You can see back here. Uh, and these are, you know, some of my favorites. That's why I listed these stocks. I've traded uh, these four uh, that I listed back then many times over the years. And when they want to run, they can really run back here. AG 
went from uh, low in 2016 without hardly blinking. It rallied 700, over 700 percent there to the highs. So, like I said, uh, be careful uh, shorting these guys on pullbacks, you know, during a strong uptrend because they can just run, run, run and make overbought uh, become much more overbought when they want to. Uh, so that's AG. And the third that I mentioned back then uh, was EXK, Endeavor Silver. And we need to pull that chart. Well, let's look at the bigger chart. There it is. EXK, it was at uh, 233 at the time. Uh, to right about at this uh, downtrend line there. Had it going up here to this 316-ish level and then 584. That is EXK. And these are all weekly charts, by the way, because, again, long-term, when trend trades, I'm usually going to work off the weekly chart. So it went up, hit that 316 target almost to the button, 60% gain from where it was mentioned. I had a the lower downtrend line there before. But uh, hit that target, pulled back. There's your reaction. And so from here, uh, most likely scenario, let me clean this trend line up a little bit. It probably fits better if you come in like this, catch those highs come in there and just say that's pretty much a back test all along after hitting that first target. So here's one that still has, you know, before the bull market and gold and silver is all said and done. And it may be beyond this. That still keeps us under our previous bull market eye. That's about 146% if it gets to that 584 target. Uh, 316 is still resistance. Probably maybe get another reaction there, but remember we already hit it once. So we could go on through there. Uh, everything else looks constructive on the indicators. You know, the divergent low back here, PPO is up above the zero line and bullish territory curling back up. And then finally back then, ASM was also highlighted. ASM, and I mentioned that, that one's a penny stock. That's a small one. Uh, it was at 57 cents at the time. Had it going up here to 72 and then 112. And uh, it's about, it's right about where it was back then. It's come full circle. It went up. Hit my target, uh, momentum field overshoot, 43% gain from there. Pulled back, uh, it's consolidating, you know, had that uh, worked off the overbought conditions and, and appears poised for the next leg up. And you can see this time around when it comes back to that 72 res cent resistance level, it's probably going to come in right around with this downtrend line as well. I need to tighten that up just a hair. Let me just notice it's not not exactly on these candles there we go yeah so it should come right up here right about there and and I think we'd get something like this now we already hit that target once so we could go right on through it but with intersecting resistance levels probably get one more reaction and then boom move up to that uh, 112 target again low price means higher risk uh, it's a penny stock uh, so uh, you know trade it or don't trade it if that's not in your comfort level but if you do take it yeah I'd think it's wise to take a smaller position in this than the more established larger um, miners with uh, bigger market caps. Okay, so back to the metals and we'll cover the rest of the miners here real quick. Gold again, there's your breakout on the daily chart and then the weekly chart. Uh, let's go over to the weekly here. As I said, not much has changed. You know, here's your previous bull market. There's your bear market. Let me draw it out for you. I might be talking too fast here. Uh, you had a bull market back here in gold that ended in uh, 2011 uh, with, let me grab my arrow tool right here with the 2011 highs. And from there, we started a bear market that ended back in late 2015. And since then, we've been, it hasn't been a, a as vigorous a bull market as that last one, but uh, the trend is clearly higher. And again, this looked like a uh, consolidation period. And until and unless we take out that previous high, uh, there's no way to say that, uh, you know, that uh, this, this correction is over. But pretty much there's that downtrend line from the daily chart. You can see a big impulsive green candle and... Uh, Indicators are constructive, so it looks good to me for the next thrust up here. And likewise, when we look at GDX, so you had a divergent high right there, just like you had one back here. You know, same story. GDX is in a bull market, make no mistake about it. You had this little inverse head and shoulders bottoming pattern back here that broke out that, you know, the back in uh, 2018. And we had a leg up, divergent high, led to a correction. We had another strong leg up in the bull. Uh, led to a correction. And uh, just like gold, I was highlighting these uh, downtrend lines recently and saying that, uh, you know, you'd need gold to break out to confirm. The miners broke out first. Some had dual downtrend lines. There's your divergence line. And we broke out. 
And as I said, their miners are only going to go so far without gold. I said that a few weeks ago after this breakout had occurred, that yes, it was a breakout, but you need gold to break out of that comparable downtrend line. That's what's happened the last few days. That's hence the strong rally uh, is that confirmation that gold has finally broken out. And um, so, so far, so good on, on GDX. And when you look at a weekly chart, uh, same story. You know, here's your primary downtrend line right there. Big old symmetrical triangle pattern on the weekly that was broken to the upside back here, right here. Breakout back test, uh, little falling wedge type pattern, uh, potential bull flag as well. When you look at the flagpole there, bull flag and a breakout, and that's the measured target up there. It would take you to about 40.29. So. And I, th I think we can hit that. I think there's a good chance unless all this breakout suddenly fails. Remember, this is a this is the week of Christmas uh, holidays. You had the, you know the Thanksgiving holiday just a few weeks back. At the end of the year, you are more prone to false breakouts. But these these look pretty legit right now. And and take them on face value until and unless these breakouts fail. Now again, don't mistake a pullback now with a failed breakout. We're comfortably above those recent breakout levels and so if anything changes I'll let you know but as of now this chart looks constructive as well and uh, especially now that gold is confirmed and now let's talk silver the other precious metal uh, silver has uh, you know also had the same consolidation right here you can zoom in a little tighter it's kind of a sloppy chart on this weekly chart but everything looks constructive the indicators are constructive there's this was our breakout in silver back here uh, that's when I was talking about it play, poised to play a game of catch up and that was that was a game of catch up and that's where the miners rallied uh, silver miners outperformed the gold miners for, for the most part and then we had a pullback after we hit that 1758 target with a little momentum field overshoot and we're starting to move up now when we look at the daily chart um, beautiful price action since the breakout of the bullish falling wedge you had this downtrend line here right here and here's your divergence line there's your falling wedge pattern positive divergence right there at the lows uh, breakout and it's been nothing but impulsive buying so far just like back here we had a falling wedge breakout and a big move up there uh, so looking good but again getting a little extended nothing goes up forever uh, you get a little bit overbought near term especially when you're at resistance and you get these pullbacks along the way and that's why again why I'm doing this video and SIA, SILJ was an official trade till recently. Now, uh, the only reason well, it hit the final target, and as I said at the time uh, when it hit it a couple days ago, I said, "Look, you can either um, book profits. That was the final target on the trade, and I, I, you know, so therefore I remove it as the uh, from the official trade category, but." Uh, you can also raise stops and then let the trade run because the longer term outlook again uh, is constructive. So it depends what type of trader. When I flip over to weekly chart here, you can see that this was uh, 1135 was resistance. We hit it back there, came up, hit it again. Now we've made a pulse of breakout. And uh, although there's some minor levels along the way, I really don't see a lot slowing down uh, SILJ, which again, are the junior silver miners, until about the 14 level. And these are other potential long-term targets. So again, you look at a bear market here, right there, or at least a downtrend within the bull market, I should say. Uh, downtrend for a while, breakout. And uh, this chart still looks uh, quite constructive. So... Um, you know, and if you have, uh, if you're holding out for additional gains, then I'd be focusing on this weekly chart again, looking at these levels here for the next uh, targets. And also keep in mind, you know, you want to take your, if you're trading the miners, um, you definitely want to factor in what gold and silver are doing at the time. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say this is looking good and it's rocking and rolling and heading up there to the $14 level, but it gets here to about 1380 or so, a little shy of that. And at the same time it does, silver and gold both hit resistance or they break some downtrend lines or support levels after putting in divergent highs so a correction looks likely well if that's the case and the metals reverse then you're going to have to be adjust your you know adjust your trading plan and, and either tighten stops or book profits there uh, because if the metals correct then the uh, miners will most likely follow I mean, look at that by the way look at this uh, volume uh, talk about confirmation on the move big big volume on the move uh, so far. 
Okay, and one thing I'll do, do, and then we'll wrap the video up so it's not super long. I just want to rifle through the components of GDX, and I'm going to have these sorted. It's on a watch list on another page, different monitor. Um, sorting these by market cap. Uh, and these are the senior miners. These are the components of GDX. And so you can see here on a weekly chart, and I'll, I'm just going to look at the weekly charts now. So we'll get this video over with. Uh, I don't want it to run forever. You know, Newmont was very constructive, had divergence, you know, positive divergence at the lows and everything else. It's been in a bull market, but it's uh, within there, it's been in a sideways trading range for a while. And you can see about 40, 42.72-ish. Uh, that was support back here once broken led to that leg down uh, we had a brief momentum fueled overshoot another failure just shy of that level and we're there now so just wanted to point out here is the, the largest gold mining stock right there at resistance right now um, now if you ask me I think it's gonna break out it could do it now or it could have another pullback within the channel it's hard to say until and unless it actually happens and when it happens you want to see a big solid weekly candle green candle with an additional candle or two following up afterwards and so that would be also a you know up next buy trigger for NEM however right now it's at resistance which again tells me hey if you have FOMO going on right now, fear of missing out, and you want to be in the miners uh, because you see them running, uh, just remember uh, you've got some coming up at resistance. GOLD, Barrick Gold, uh, broke out of this symmetrical triangle pattern on the weekly chart. Beautiful, beautiful chart right here. Run right up to that 20, uh, uh, 2012 resistance, pull back, coming back up, and uh, if it can break above 22, that would be the next buy signal. I don't know why I moved that line. I must have clicked and dragged it. There it is. But right back around 22 right there. And uh, that, that would be bullish. But as of now, uh, well, it's a little bit below resistance. So that one has some, some room to run. Uh, I just want to kind of do this and, and go over give you the bigger picture on all these components. FNV, I don't see a lot right there. It's uh, coming up at... Uh, on a new high on this weekly chart so there's really no resistance there at least a new 52 week high or multi-year high that is AM I don't see a lot in there that concerns me uh, RGLD I mean these are mostly they're all bullish charts don't get me wrong I'm just looking out for which ones are at resistance uh, because the more components you have at resistance the uh, greater the chance of a pullback uh, this was a key breakout level I just wanted to point that out 9511 so it broke out had a steep up trend line and a little correction and it looks poised for the next leg up. Indicators are constructive as well. Uh, and that's R, G, L, D, Royal Gold, WPM, uh, Wheat and Precious Metals. There's an uptrend line to watch if you're in that one and it's coming up on resistance at 3125. There's still a little room before it gets there. So it's a little bit shy but again uh, needs to take out that level, take it out impulsively to open the door for the next leg up. Uh, whereas a break of this downtrend or this uptrend line would not be uh, a good thing. And again, weekly chart. So you want to see weekly, solid weekly candlestick closes below support for sell signal and a solid weekly close above for a buy signal. AU, another one, very constructive chart, you know, bullish. You know, divergent low right there, just like we had a divergent low back here at the time. That was a catalyst for a 300% rally. This time around, uh, it's rallied about uh 240 or so percent 230 it needs to take out that 2314 level you can see that was a previous reaction high here we failed right there and from the look of it i think it will this looks like consolidation below that level after an extended run and that would be your next buy signal but again this just tells you to hey maybe not the best time if you don't have already exposure to gold and you're jumping in and if you do get in just go in lightly wait for the charts to you know wait for those levels to be taken out uh, I always like scaling into long term I'm, I keep talking about gold and gold mining stocks and silver miners as long term trend trades or investments and in that case you can just uh, you know add to those positions strategically or tactically you know on pullbacks to support or breakouts above resistance and uh, scale in. BVN, uh, this one has resistance there about 1766 and it's right on uptrend line or just above uptrend line support. Uh, KGC, Kinross Gold, uh, there it is. Uh, resistance around 475. It had a brief uh, move over that, pulled back below and uh, here's an uptrend line to watch if you're in that one. We'll keep an eye on it there. But uh, next, next stop uh, or next target looks to be about 735 up there. BTG, this one broke out recently, 
looks good. I don't see a lot in the chart that's scary. It is a little bit of divergence forming, so that, that could play out. We'll, we'll have to watch these. Or the divergences could get burned through or extend. You know, you can extend the divergences and continue to move up for a while. That would be your divergence line. And there's an uptrend line if you happen to be in this one. Or, um, you know, an uptrend line, by the way, can be used for two things. You can have a stop set somewhat below an uptrend line. And you can also buy pullbacks to a, a trend line support. That's another way to go during a bullish trend. PAAS, Pan American Silver Corp. Uh, this one's just broken out of this uh, 2136. Pretty pretty important level. That's bullish uh, as long as that breakout holds. And uh, this one looks good. But again, uh, could be a momentum field overshoot. We'll have to see how the week ends. It's only you know today plus tomorrow, uh, last two trading days in the week. And uh, it is a holiday, so take everything you see with a little bit of a grain of salt. Although, again, I'm doing this video because these are pretty impulsive breakouts and pretty, you know, of, of well-watched levels. So, uh, you know, I think, the, I think the breakout in gold will stick. Um, but, again, respect it if it doesn't. 657, big level on GFI, Gold Fields Limited. Um, it's testing it now. And if it can break above there, then the way I view this is just a big old bottoming pattern, a multi-year basing pattern right here in that stock. And that would be quite bullish if, if taken out, you know, call it 660, give or take. And uh, where would it go from there? I'd have to sharpen my pencil to come up with some price targets, but I'm tr adding in a few trend lines and uh, price resistance levels. I'd say right here, that about that $11 level, I think, is a very likely and doable target uh, in the coming months. AUY, beautiful little wedge breakout, moving up, had a little consolidation, starting to move up again. CDE, uh, break, same thing, trend line breakout, it's been steadily gaining since. IAG, uh, resistance around 4, so it's consolidating below that 4 resistance, if it can break that out. Um, break above that level, I think it can run up here, probably about 626 or so. There's the level. AGI had a breakout on a momentum field overshoot, fell back below that trend line, and we have price resistance 601. So we really need to take out that $6 level. And if so, your next stop, next resistance, and target would be that 775 ish level, that previous reaction high. But again, bullish trend, you can just continue to keep wide stops, periodically ratchet your stops up. And again, I like to do it strategically. What does that mean? Well, if you took out, let's say 601, you start moving up here. At that point, maybe set a stop just below 601 to allow for a pullback and a back test. Um, if take out 779, you can, you know, you could add to it on the breakout depending on how it looks at the time, with a stop set somewhat above in case it wants to back test and keep on going up. HL. Hecla Mining uh, at resistance right now. 342 is a pretty big level. You can see the line here, all the reactions on the chart, gaps and other other reactions there. Uh, but a beautiful looking chart. You know, it's been strong, advancing, and it could continue on through there to 457. But again, on this one, you don't want to wait. I would not add to this one. If anything, if I had a position of this one, I'd I'd be tightening stops or even booking profits right now on it, uh, looking to recycle it on a pullback. Depends, you know, how the 60-minute and daily charts look. I uh, don't see much there. Uh, that one, I jumped over that one, OR. Uh, it's at resistance right there at about 975. SSRM, uh, beautiful, strong chart. Really not a lot of resistance. There's some, let me just add this line right here. I do see... Yeah, I do see resistance right around here. You can see all these reactions back there, 1681, but it's taken it out impulsively right now. So there's a breakout. So you have the story here is some of these are at some of the at resistance, some of these are just below resistance, and some have just broken out. Now, if the majority had broken out and we weren't so overbought, I'd say that's a good thing. We're probably going to run, and we still could. Don't get me wrong. The rest could continue to break out. However, the fact that only a handful have broken out and, and quite a few are either at or still below resistance says these breakouts may fail. And by failing, maybe it just comes in and back tests the level. It doesn't have to be a bad failure or it goes back down below it and then breaks out in the next uh, couple weeks here. There's a potential trend line there to watch as well on SSRM. Uh, this guy can move. I've traded this one for years and when it wants to run, it can really run. There's a 322% gain over a period of uh, less than seven months right there. 
AG, uh, I already covered that one earlier. That was one of my top picks back in July for a trend trade. Uh, HYM, Harmony Gold, you know, just all overall constructive charts. And I don't see, uh, you know, uh, all of these stocks at resistance, just quite a few of them at resistance or near resistance. EGO, for example, big old downtrend line. So, you know, again, the takeaway from this video is not just, hey, be aware these you know we're getting a little overbought there's some resistance levels that need to be taken out we may get a near-term pullback the other th the other part of the video is look at these as trade ideas as well here's EGO there's a beautiful downtrend line it's been checked on several times and uh, so a break of that trend line would be bullish quite bullish there's one two three four five reactions we're consolidating here this was resistance 729 resistance once broken as it was right here becomes support so you're sandwiched between support and resistance you could go long this stock right here um, because it's at support with a stop somewhat above uh, somewhat below them that's objective or and or when I say and or it means okay a partial position is all I would consider here based on everything I've said earlier in this video uh, then adding on that one if and when the trend line especially that 961 resistance level gets taken out 961 is so close to the trend line that's your safe bet so there's your second lot if you will or let's say you take a half position here bring it up to a full position there there's your next target but again a breakout of this trend line here it's such a powerful multi-year downtrend line that it would be quite bullish and I think uh, it would open the door for more upside and you know what I do and will do is take a look at the chart and add additional targets if this uh, chart continues to firm up. All right, a few more and we're done. Uh, NGD, uh, beautiful little wedge pattern there, broke out, had a strong run up, pulled back. It's a low price. I'm getting down uh, to the lower price stocks here. Remember, I'm going through this watch list in order of uh, market cap, descending order. So these are your smaller companies. Uh, SVM, Civil Corp, Metals, um, big, big, nice run up. Not a lot in this chart that, that concerns me. You know, I think it's in a bull market and I wouldn't certainly wouldn't short it. Uh, whether you take it here or not, mm, again, based on everything I said, probably best to wait for a pullback. This one just flagged right here recently. So you had a nice bull flag there, flag pull, broke out. And the bull flag measures up, you know, uh, quite a bit more if you take the distance of the flagpole, the, the initial leg up, add it to where the lowest point of the flag before it broke out, and that would roughly give your measured target there. That's it, guys. Uh, let's wrap it up here. Long video, but I covered a lot. And um, like I said, let's let's see what the uh, market does too. Most market continues to rally and hasn't given us any sell signals. If that continues, that's probably going to deflate this gold, uh, the flight to safety bid in gold. Uh, it's not even a flight to safety bid right now. It's technically driven is what I think it is. Um, again, uh, breakout looks legit so far. And uh, I'll tell you what, if the markets were to correct, if we get the sell signals I've been talking about for a while on QQQ, we don't have them yet. QQQ just continues to work its way, walk right up this trend line. Um, but if we started to get some some serious sell signals, then gold could actually uh, continue to run and work through those overbought conditions. Because at that point, you'd have the flight, uh, yeah, the flight to safety bid. Right now, it's just really a, a technically induced bid. I think what we're seeing overall is a reinflation, inflationary trade going on. Commodities are rallying, oil's rallying, uh, gold's rallying, the stock market's rallying. Uh, and that's uh, people realize that uh, the same mistake the Fed's always made. They're just being too easy. Um, they've been too easy in there, and it's starting to uh, percolate. And uh, like I said, I think the theme for 20, uh, 2020 is going to be an in inflation trade. We're going to see the Fed realize that, hey, uh, we've been giving easy money for too long, and now inflation's starting to rear its ugly head. We're going to have to get in front of that, and so they'll have to pull up 180 on their, their neutral stance. Uh, we're not there yet, and so uh, you know, trade accordingly. Right now, if you're in the equities, uh, just watch this trend line. Uh, I'm not even going to go. Over, I didn't go over QQQ and uh, or I'm um, sorry, SPY and IWM this morning because they broke down last week slightly below those trend lines. But this is a leading index. Uh, it's all about technology, and QQQ is you know 50% plus tech heavy, and so you need to see the tech sector and the tech stocks break down to get a real correction in this market. So we'll watch QQQ and um, let's wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. I hope you enjoyed it.